sure you guys just for all the bullshit can agree we can talk about the Aaron Rodgers stuff because it has been an absolute high for me this week originally I was I'm not gonna lie to you guys and I think that this is very clear if you follow me on Twitter (laughs) but I was very annoyed by all of this bullshit like I was just like get it done who gives a shit like whatever fuck Aaron Rodgers and unfortunately I do owe him a bit of an apology not that he will ever hear this just because I don't know how much of the truth he was telling on the Pat McAfee show it's very easy that he could be the victim whatever But big media kind of got wrecked by Aaron Rodgers. He went on and said that, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it by now. The Shefty lose my number. Nice try tweet. The Diana Rossini tweet that was like, these are requests from Aaron Rodgers. And he was like, I never had any demands. I never had any requests. And it's like, how much of that was accurate reporting and how much of it was shit stirring? I just, it goes to show that like even big media fucks up. And it's like, I swear to God, if you're small on Twitter or something like that and you fuck up, people eat you alive. But it just goes to show that everyone quite literally fucks up. The Shefty shit had me dying. I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't going to tune into the Pat McAfee show. And then 10 minutes after one o'clock, I was like, all right, it's fucking killing me. So I did it. I'm, I'm going to be honest. But this whole fucking thing was just so funny to me. So funny. And all the memes and shit to come out of it. Do you guys have any other thoughts? Like, am I the only one that thinks that this is like fucking so entertaining? No, it was great. It was incredible. It's like, and I hated it before the Pat McAfee show. And now that all of this shit has gone on, it's like, yeah, like I said, do I think Aaron Rodgers could absolutely be embellishing and playing the victim a bit? Yeah. But I think that this is as gray area. Everyone is as shady as you think they are, because obviously Aaron Rodgers has kind of this legacy of being a bit of a diva, difficult to work with, whatever. And then you go in and you have the Shefty and Rossini and whoever else tweets. But then you also have to kind of think about the fact that if you're the Jets and the Packers, the reason you can't meet somewhere is because the Packers don't want Aaron Rodgers and the Jets do. Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to play for the Packers and he wants to play for the Jets. That being said, the Packers do hold Aaron Rodgers contract and that holds some leverage. Is he at the end of his career? Yeah. Is he the best quarterback in the NFL anymore? No. That being said, he's still great. He still has experience. He's still a leader. He's a guy people want to play with. Yeah. Is he weird? Sure. But that's a, that's a very valuable thing to have. And it seems as though those two sides can't really meet somewhere because they don't agree on the value because Aaron Rodgers to the Jets doesn't want to be there and they don't want him. So why won't you give him to us? But the Packers know that they have something valuable. So do I think that they're going to wait for the summer? Probably. But where do you guys stand on that? Do you guys think that someone's more in the wrong than the other? I just think that everyone's wrong here. Yeah, I think the whole situation was just handled really odd in the sense that like, he was taking this time. He was going on his, you know, <laughs> what, do you, what did you call it? Darkness DMT. Darkness DMT. Darkness DMT challenge. <laughs> so like when he, he like, so he was doing that whole thing and he was like making up his mind. And I, and I understand like, these are, these are people at the end of the day, they're athletes. They're, you know, incredible at what they do. They're huge in the media, but they're people. So I was kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt. Like you need to figure out what you need to do you do you on your journey. Um, And then it was kind of just like, still, we're not hearing from him. He's coming out of his DMT darkness adventure. We still don't really know what's going on. (laughs) And then we find out from the Diana Rossini tweet, which I just want to say like, RIP Diana Rossini, because she was just absolutely decimated in the media this week. And the thing is, is, it really started out a good week for her because she came out with those picks and that that really took off, you know? And she it fucking blew up blew and up. people ran with it. And like, I will say she never said they were demands. I believe the word she used was requests. Requests, yes. But still to throw that out there at all is kind of crazy. Yeah, it was just honestly like, and I hate to see that too, just like as a woman in sports, like, you know, we're always rooting for each other. We're always kind of hoping you know, it goes well. And it was interesting to see the differences and how people reacted to his thing with Shefty versus his thing with Diana. And maybe, so, and maybe know, but. it was bad information. We don't know that. 
But honestly, and I get you can't throw your sources under the bus, but I think that I would still at least be like, it was bad information instead of just, I stand by whatever, right? Right. right. And that's a lot of bad information. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. like a little bit. It was like, wh- where's all this coming from? Like, you know, it's very specific and a good amount of information and that you're sending out. So, And it also blew up. And I, and I know that everyone knows this, but I haven't seen a whole lot of people talking about it. It's just, it kind of snowballed because maybe it was good information and Aaron Rodgers is deciding to say it wasn't because they did wind up signing Alan Lazard. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's what kind of validated it for everyone was, was like, that was rumored to happen or it did happen before Rodgers went on McAfee. So I think that people ran with it even more as like a demand list. Yeah, and I I feel like weirdly we didn't see I at least I didn't even with everything being said with the with the request demands coming out everything I was not expecting the McAfee situation for him to come out and be like lose my number this that the other thing like that I didn't expect I knew he'd do something with McAfee yeah well I, yeah of course but I just that kind of I just didn't see that coming so for me that was very shocking and kind of like okay, wait, as you pointed out, how much of this is real? How much of this has been real? Like, it was almost like you were like living in like Inception or something. You're like, how much has been been a dream and how much is actually happening? I think the most shocking part for me was him saying that when he went to do his darkness DMT challenge, he (laughs) said that he was 90% sure he was going to retire. And then when he got out, he had sources telling him that he had been being shopped, which made him want to compete again, but not for the Packers. Is that correct? I, I thought it was the other way around. What do you mean? I thought it was 10% retired, 90% keep playing. I thought it was 90% retired. Am I wrong? I know those numbers are right. I I, I thought it was the other way around. You might be right. I don't know. I thought Kendra's right. Yeah. Because, because he came back out and he was like, he was like there were all these rumors of people that were shot but i i i remember thinking to myself you didn't know about that the four four days ago like you're trying to tell us that you didn't know people were shot when you were around four days ago like that just happened he only lasted two days to be fair oh really yeah he didn't do the whole thing he didn't he couldn't he didn't wow oh aaron well um, congratulations to all our friends in uh New York division for not having to deal with him anymore. That too. Or our Jets listeners. Congrats to you guys. 